Oh, goody. It's our craft video. Yay, yay, yay. You're going to love the crafts this time because they're actually a little bit easier than the other crafts that we've done, but they're still kind of cool. So you're going to love them. So um, the point of our crafts is to um, do something about, I mean, to build something that has to do with Jericho, right? So there are multiple lessons that we can get from the story about what the Lord did with God's people when he went through um, teaching them how they were going to take care of this big, big city. And it was an interesting way that he told them. He said, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Joshua, I want you to have your army and all the people of Israel and the um, priests and all of the Levites, everybody, march around the city of Jericho every day for six days. Then on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, when the priests blow their trumpets and the people shout, praise the Lord, the city walls are going to fall down and you run in and take the city. And Joshua said, yes, sir, because Joshua knew that God was not going to fool him, that God said, do this. And you know what? It probably didn't make any sense to Joshua at all. He was probably thinking, that's about a crazy way to go to war. But he's God. Who's going to argue with the guy who can part the Red Sea? Who's going to argue with the guy that can, you know, make water come out of rocks and make the bread of heaven fall around the camp every day? Who's going to argue with the guy that kept my shoes from wearing out for 40 years? Not Joshua. Joshua has figured it out. Well, the people of God did march around the city one time every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, the priests blew their trumpets and the people shouted, praise the Lord. And when they did, the walls came tumbling down. How's that for being amazing? So there's lots of songs and things that you've learned over the years about Joshua. You know, Joshua takes the walls of Jericho. And, but what God told Joshua in the beginning, in the very beginning of our lesson, you remember we read that one where God was telling Joshua, Joshua 1.9, Be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God, and I will be with you everywhere you go. And so God's message to his people was that here is the land that I promised you so long ago. I promised you this land. And here it is. Rejoice in your victory. Right? And so they do. They praise the Lord even before they have taken the city because they believe God is certainly going to do it. And he does. And let my name be known among the nations that I am the one true God and that you are my chosen people. So that is the lesson of Jericho and what the Israelites are going to teach in Jericho. Okay, so when you went into the um, downloads, your, or your parents or your big brother or sister, whoever helped you, they downloaded a sheet that looks like this, right? It's called the Be Strong sheet. So this sheet is where we're going to actually um, just remind ourselves where does strength come from? Is it super strong swords and shields and spears and bows and arrows and real strong muscles? No. Those are all great to have if you're going to be in a war. But if you don't have God on your side, it doesn't matter what else you've got because there were a lot of super strong cities in the Promised Land and Joshua's soldiers took them all. Okay, so in the middle, it says right here that you're going to write, God is where strength comes from, on the bottom. So I've done this, okay? So I wrote on here, God is where strength comes from, and it's on the bar, okay? And then the directions say right here, um, now draw or write about two strengths that you have on the bell on these are called the bells okay on each weight of the thing okay 
So on here, you're going to write down two strengths or particular blessings that you have and you can color it like I did because I love to color things. I love it when things are colorful. So I colored it up and made it kind of fancy. And this is what I wrote down in this one. I wrote, very good listener. One of the things I have always been happy about is that I have the ability to really hear people when they're talking. And I have observed that oftentimes some people don't. They don't. So a person asks or, or says something and the person they're talking to doesn't hear them, doesn't, doesn't understand what they said and doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't answer the right question. They ask a question and the person listening answers the wrong question because they didn't get the, what the person was saying because I am a very good listener. I've observed that over the years. The other thing I put here is that super healthy. I'm a super healthy person. I really am so blessed. I have such a healthy body. A lot of times I've been so happy that God was able to use me to take care of people who were sick because everybody around me was getting sick or hurt or scared or worn out or whatever, but not me because God has made me a super healthy person and I just thank the Lord for that blessing and I hope that it's his plan for me to be super healthy all the way to the end of my life. That would be great. And then it does not say this in the directions to do this, but I just wrote a little prayer in here because I felt so thankful about my two strengths, my two blessings. So I wrote down, thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of my blessings. Help me to always be thankful. Amen. So you do your sheet however you want. And if you do it, you take a picture of it and send it to me. Or if you color the Rahab picture that we had for our lesson, you take a picture of it and send it to me so that I can see it. All right, now we have another craft. And if you downloaded this stuff from the site, then you actually have already seen it. Okay, so let me, let me explain to you what you're going to do. You have this sheet, and you're going to color this. You're going to make it as, decorate, as decorated as you can. We're going to make um, what's called a shofar, which is the kind of horn that the priests, this is what it actually looks like. This is a shofar that this guy is blowing, that the priests blew around the walls of Jericho when, when they wanted to let the people know, that's it, that's seven times now, shout out, praise the Lord. And so you're going to decorate it up, right? You're going to color it up so beautiful, however you like to do it, that you think, ooh, that looks beautiful and that's the way I want to do it. Okay, so that's what I did, is I colored mine up. I made it so beautiful. And so after you color it, then you need to cut it out, okay? So you cut it out on the dark black lines, okay? So after you cut it out on the dark black lines, I think you will be happier if you glue this thing that you cut out onto a piece of construction paper or cardstock or maybe just another piece of paper just so that it will be stiffer and that will make it a little bit stronger because you're going to curl it and make it into a horn. Okay? So after you get it cut out and you've got it to where it's glued to either another piece of paper or a piece of construction paper or cardstock, something to make it a little bit stiff, then you're going to put glue or double-sided tape or glue dots or something right there. I don't think staples will work, boys and girls, because you'd have to be able to go down the whole thing. And when it's curved like that, it's not easy to go down the whole thing. Okay, so you curve it around. And after you curve it around, you stick it together with whatever you put on there. If you put glue dots or... Miss Peggy used contact cement, because I love contact cement. Um, but you can use two-sided tape. That works great, too, because I love that. And then you know I love glue dots. You could use a glue stick. But if you use a glue stick, you're going to have to hold it for several minutes. Not just a few seconds. Several minutes to make sure that it glues nice and hard. Because you want it to stay in a horn, right? This is going to be your shofar. So then you can blow the horn when you go around the city seven times 
and you get there the seventh time on that seventh day and you go and the people shout alleluia praise the lord and the walls come falling down and so you can use your horn to remind yourself and remind your friends and your mom and dad that when you hear the shofar you remember praise the lord alleluia Oh. All right, I'm going to blow my shofar. You shout hallelujah. Oh. Good job, you guys. Good job. Okay, that's the craft video. I hope you enjoyed putting your crafts together. And I enjoyed having an opportunity to teach you about it. I love you so much. I miss you so terribly. I'll see you in the lesson next week.